Hey guys, Adam here in the AeroWorks Workshop and today we're going to go over what we've been working on this past week with the Super Duty. Now if you recall in last week's episode, we got the seats installed in the Super Duty and this week we did a couple things. One, we kind of straightened up the shop, we got rid of the uh, finishing kit crate, rearranged a few things and we started working on the first wing, the right wing. Uh, we also got some finished parts hung up, got them out of the way to make some more space. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've accomplished so far this last week. Well, it was time to start getting all the wing parts prepped and ready to go. I started with the right wing because that one has a little bit less uh, internal workings in it as far as the pitot tube and all that. Uh, basically got all of my ribs sorted out, the nose ribs. Started removing stickers where I could, labeling them with the Sharpie because there are various rib types nose rib types as well as trailing rib types you want to make sure you have all those labeled and marked uh, correctly uh, another thing you can do there is some prep work you can do prior to fastening the nose ribs to the spar like putting the angle braces in uh, riveting on the slat brackets and so on so this complete video here was done again over about a two two day period you probably could take a full day and get most of what I got done in this video um, but again, that's just what I got done in, in two evenings. All right, guys, well, let's take a look around the workshop here. Again, Super Duty sitting on the gear. Uh, and we've been doing some moving things around, getting things sorted out. I've got a couple benches here where I do small parts layout and riveting. Uh, my main rollaway toolbox with all my riveting tools and stuff in it. Got the right wing up here on the table. Uh, again, Assembled this and uh, you could get this much done in probably a solid day of work. I think I did it in a couple evenings. Uh, again, a lot of it is just still Clico together, still getting all the parts fit up and, uh, you know, sorted out. Uh, do have some of the riveting done. You can see the, uh, the tank bay here, the fuel tank bay. This is all riveted up. Um, got the nose ribs coming on. There are some nose ribs here that do have uh, both a and bolt hardware as well as rivets some have bolts on top and bottom so this is one of those things that you have to really follow the plans on because while these ribs all are the same shape you notice that we have various size holes depending on if they have the slat bracket or not and so on so make sure you write all those down i'm still taking some labels off but when you do take the labels off it's always a good idea to write the part number on there because it won't be a matter of seconds and you'll be like what the heck one is this uh, you know, the only thing you have going for you, if you do get something missorted, is that obviously the slat brackets will have the holes in the nose as well as the uh, angle uh, holes for the support there, whereas the other ones do not. You can also look at the size of the uh, lightning holes. That might help you there. And then rib one here, the nose rib, does not have a flange on it, so it's just flat. You actually have to put an angle in there uh, for that nose rib. So... Let's take a look around here. We also have, uh, again, organization is key. I keep everything organized here as far as rivets, clecos, small parts, pieces, cables, uh, some wire, some electronics, things like that. And then if I move my rollaway cart out of the way here, uh, I have the original crate that the uh, original airframe kit came in. Still have some of my wing skins down below. Uh, you can see here is the finished elevator, finished rudder. Uh, I got some of the glass parts, or the plexiglass parts back there, and then I use the top of the rack as kind of a uh, baker's rack, so to speak, for those long aluminum pieces that we don't want getting damaged. There's uh, control sticks all powder coated up. Uh, as far as the rest of the parts, I use a shelving system here. I've got all my uh, avionics, and you'll want to stay tuned because uh, in another, the next episode, I'll probably be going over uh, the panel layout and what we're doing there. Also have lighting, uh, hardware, uh, the stole panel, which I'm not putting in because I have the cruiser panel, uh, door parts, strut parts, the other wing parts, and so on. Have a map box, which I may or may not be using. Um, so that's that. Uh, also, again, Super Duty here with the cruiser panel in it. You can kind of see the start of the layout there. We've got the Dynon uh, large screen with the radios and intercom. And then we'll go into what we're doing on the other side here later. Above the uh, wing table, 
I have the horizontal stabilizer. That's uh, about 99% done. I have to uh, actually take these in ribs off and clean those up because we're actually powder coating this. So you'll be seeing that also in a future episode. Uh, so we'll be working on that. Other than that, um, again, seats went in last episode. Gear is on, shops cleaned up, ready to start rocking and rolling and getting these wings done. So looking forward to getting things done, guys. Hope you are too. Hey guys, well I appreciate you following along with my build. I hope you're out building what you want to build, whether it's a Super Duty or some other brand. It doesn't matter, it's just that you're out there doing something, building your own and uh, fulfilling your passion for aviation like myself. Make sure you tune into the next episode because we're going to be covering all of the avionics that I've chosen for the uh, Super Duty behind me. Uh, and we'll be going through all the parts and pieces, why I chose them, the pros and cons of each thing. And so you're not going to want to miss that. Make sure you like and subscribe down below. And uh, again, I appreciate you watching. It's Adam from Aeroworks, and we'll see you on the next video.